Praise the Lord, saints of God, body of Christ, body of Christ. This is the prophetess of the Most Highest God. With a message that Jesus himself gave unto me. Through the Holy Spirit. This message is prophetic. And you must listen, receive, and obey everything that he is saying through me to you all. Let us pray for the enemy does not want me to give this message out. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I come before you, precious King, to thank you for your love, mercy, and grace. To thank you for this message, Father God. Thank you for this great revelation you have given unto me to give unto your children, Father. The followers of Jesus Christ, thank you, Almighty God. Your word is spoken. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be thy name forever and ever. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father in heaven. On May the 6th of 2023, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and the Lord spoke. He said, My daughter, I have come to you to give you this message. Bring it forth, for this is very, very, very important and to my children. This is what is going to take place. Quickly, quickly, quickly. And you must not be in the darkness. Children, it is I, your father. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I am he who has come in the flesh, and I am coming again. I bring forth this warning unto all, who have ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive what I give unto thee. Be blessed. Revelation revealed by the Spirit of the Lord to me. King Charles, one of the beasts, which has no kingdom, but now he does in 2023. This is dealing with the coronation of Prince Charles becoming king. Power was given to him by the dragon, which is Satan, and the Antichrist of the is one of the ten leaders that are under Prince Charles, which will be king. And the Pope is the religious leader, as you all know. He is the false prophet. He is the third beast. All three beasts are here on earth. The three evil trinity in the world is here. God revealed this to me. Brothers and sisters, body of Christ, body of Christ, watch the coronation. See with your spiritual eyes. Hear with your spiritual ears. And receive with your heart. This is prophecy concerning the beast the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Open up your eyes, brethren. Open up your ears. Receive with your heart. For this is Revelation 13 through 18. The beast. He is here. He is here. He is here. Brothers and sisters, body of Christ, body of Christ, receive this revelation. And it says, um, the rapture is so very close. Be ready, for this is 
found in Revelation 13. The two beasts, the world leader, the religious leader, known as the Antichrist and the false prophet. And read Revelation 16 through 18. It speaks about Prince Charles, the King of England, and everything that is being spoken by him already shows that he is the beast. Brethren, we are seeing it with our own eyes. We are hearing it with our own ears. Now it's time to receive it in our hearts. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is coming to take us home. Be blessed. We'll see you in the air. Love you all. Oh, and also I'm going to put a video with, along with my video, that is concerning and is giving confirmation that the Lord gave unto me. King Charles' coronation is this weekend. Iran has enough material to build five nuclear weapons. Gaza launched a hundred rockets into Israel this week and Iran has seized its second oil tanker in the Persian Gulf. These stories and more Messianic World Update is next. Shalom everyone, I'm Monty Judah with Lion and Lamb Ministries. Welcome to another edition of Messianic World Update. Today's date is Friday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, for those of you who are, care about that and in the year 2023. Well, this weekend is the big weekend for King Charles. He's going to be coronated on Saturday and the celebrations are going on already starting now and we'll be going through the whole weekend. Uh, the, uh, this is going to be a very religious ceremony for his uh, coronation. It's gonna be conducted at Westminster Abbey, which is a church. He's going to go through a procession first in which the he'll ride in this gilded carriage and be drawn by a couple of white horses. When he arrives at the abbey, he's going to be taken in. He'll be seated on the throne chair. This throne chair, which has been used by all the monarchs of um, Great Britain for many years, has a stone that is set in the chair. It's called the Stone of Scone. It was actually taken from Scotland. But the tradition is that this stone came from Israel and was the pillow that Jacob used for his head in the story of Jacob leaving his parents, going to live with the Laban for a while. Um, he has his lineage chart all lined up that says he is the son of David, so that he's fulfilling that. He will have an orb, which is really a cross. Uh, it's called the Cross of Wales. And the Pope sent him a special gift of some shards, they believe, from the cross that Yeshua, Jesus, was crucified on. And they've made a little cross out of those shards and that he's going to be holding with that. He'll have his scepter with the jewels and so forth in it. Part of the ceremony, uh, will he will be taken from there He'll be dressed in a simple linen cloth and he'll be anointed with oil. And this oil will have come from the Mount of Olives in Israel. It was blended uh, there in Jerusalem and brought to him for the oil of anointing. Uh, you will not see the anointing. That's a very private thing in which he, he gets out of his royal clothing. He wears a simple linen cloth for that same cloth that the priests used to use in the temple. There's going to be special scripture readings at this ceremony, one of which will come from 1 Kings. It will be the actual um, coronation of King Solomon, the words that David spoke over him. And it will also be the first chapter of the book of Colossians will be written there as well. 
that will be read as well. King Charles himself will pray, which is the first time that a monarch will do that. He will pray the following words. I, I pray that I may be a blessing to all thy children and every faith and conviction. And essentially, whereas before monarchs are the, are the head of the Church of England, he wants to be the head of every faith in the world. And so he's making that declaration. There will be religious representatives from the Muslim world, the Hindu world, the Sikh, and a Jewish rabbi there in, in England. By the way, the Jewish rabbi had to get special permission to be able to go into a church on Sabbath day uh, to be a part of it, but apparently they've worked that out so that he can do that. Now, here's the best part. Once he's coronated, you and I and all the people of the world are going to be called upon to swear allegiance to him. The words that they're going to tell everybody to say are as follows. Um, I swear I will pay true allegiance to your majesty and to your heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. Before we go any further, uh, one of the things about the prophecy about the mark of the beast, uh, the number of his name, and that you have to bow down to him, the combination of those two is the prophecy. This is the allegiance. Th this fully satisfies that prophecy of bowing down to him and uh, yielding to him. Uh, then there will be in unison all the people at part of the coronation and all the people of the world will say, God save King Charles, long live King Charles, and may the king live forever. Do you just hear the spiritual overtones of this? And then, of course, there'll be great celebrations that will take place uh, Saturday evening and also Sunday. Now, I don't know if you may have seen some material on this or not, Um uh, is King Charles the Antichrist. Um, in 1981, uh, a friend of mine and I wrote a computer program using the Hebrew gematria, which is the numerical system that lays over the top of an alphabet where you can calculate a value of a name or a phrase. And we wrote this computer program so that we could punch in names, phrases, uh, and calculate the Hebrew gematria of it. This gematria program is used throughout the world. Greek uses this, for example. I simply adapted that system to the English alphabet. I won't get into the details of it, but that's essentially what I did. And uh, <coughs> used that program to punch in all world leaders' names. In 1981, the one name that kicked up, uh, meaning 666, was Prince Charles of Wales. Now, it being in English wasn't enough to satisfy me. I needed to just know what his name was in Hebrew. I think that his name in Hebrew is far more significant from a spiritual standpoint. And I was able to get a translation of his name in Hebrew. And oh, by the way, the Hebrew calculation of that is also 666. That was enough to get me to start paying attention to then Prince Charles and to see if there's other prophecies that seem to line up with them. And that's in the course of my study. I discovered that there's about 40 different prophecies that's all about the Antichrist. About 20 of them are prior to the Great Tribulation. There's another 20 about things he does in the Great Tribulation. Of those that were before the Great Tribulation, um, Prince Charles matches them. And so, with great interest, I have watched this over the years. I kind of have a parallel life to him. I'm the same age as him. Um, he was in the Navy. I was in the Navy, you know, a bunch of other things. And I've, I've known about his life all through my life. He went, the first day he went to school was the first day I went to school. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird. Anyways, it was natural for me to pay attention to him and watch him. Um, about um, 30 years ago, no, longer than that, um, I was living in Colorado Springs and I invited a young Air Force cadet to come to my home for Sabbath uh, dinner. His name was Tim Huckabee. 
He was a cadet at the Air Force. And he shared with me that he had been praying very intently about the verse, Revelation 13, 18, which is the number of the beast, the number of his name, about who that was, who could that possibly be? Well, I have this program. I'm, he's a guest at my house. And I said, well, would you like to see an interesting computer program? And I took him down and I showed him and he punched the name in and he saw the calculation for it. And I gave him a, a example coat of arms uh, for Prince Charles. And in the coat of arms are all the symbols in the book of Revelation for the Antichrist. And I said, now, there's not enough evidence here to conclusively say he's the Antichrist, but we got a lot of intriguing stuff here that's very unique to him. And I think he's worthy to keep watching. Well, Mr. Huckabee uh, proceeded to uh, do even more research on this subject, and he used a pen name, Tim Cohen, and he wrote a book called The Antichrist and the Cup of Tea. This book has been out for a long time, and it went into even more detail, the College of Heraldry, all about his coat of arms, about his investor, what was said on him when he became the Prince of um, Wales, when his mother put the crown on him there in 1969 and says, this red dragon, he had given you your great power, throne and authority, and it was the red dragon of Wales. And by the way, that's, that's a verse out of Revelation 13 too. And so all of this data has been piling up about his life and how he fits those prophecies. Now, I wanna say something very clear and succinct at this point. The prophecy says that the Antichrist is revealed to the world at the abomination of desolation. That event has not yet happened. These prophecies that I'm talking about, those are the ones that are given to believers in advance so that you are not caught unawares as to who he is and what he might be doing. But you cannot say at this point he definitely is. There are certain key prophecies yet to be fulfilled, and until he does them, it's almost slanders to say he is the Antichrist. What we can say is he certainly is lining up with a lot of these prophecies, but we continue to watch and see if he will fulfill these other prophecies that definitely reveal him to the world. The... Um, let me just tell you about the coronation. There are so many spiritual symbols associated with the theme of the Antichrist that it's stunning. Um, the Antichrist, by definition, is to be an imitation of the true Messiah. He's to offer himself as a substitute for the Messiah. At this moment, you can say without qualification that King Charles is offering himself as the new Messiah of the world. And by the way, his supporters and his fans, they're just going gaga over him on this. He is being sold to the world as being the Messiah. In fact, that special anointing that he's having, so he can have the title, the anointed one. By the way, that's the definition for the word Messiah. The Messiah means the anointed one. They're making a big deal out of him getting anointed with this oil from the Mount of Olives. All of these are replicating the things we know about Yeshua of Nazareth. They're replicating the things about whom we know to be the Messiah. We have taken with this coronation a massive step toward the end of the age. So what I say to you is, Watch closely the other prophecies about the anti-Messiah. And by the way, I'm not suggesting that anyone do this, but I'm going to tell you another prophecy that it says if he's the Antichrist. There's a prophecy that says he's going to be assassinated and he'll be brought back from the dead. Now, at this point, you might have mixed feelings about, well, this is interesting, but you know, that's, that's is kind of on the edge of crazy and I'm not into the conspiracies and weird stories and so, but I can assure you this coronation is going to get your attention, but this next prophecy that gets fulfilled, it will really get your attention. So we continue to watch and pay close attention. This is 
Watching these events in this day is one of the best indicators we're at the end of the age and the Messiah is getting ready to return. Because the scripture clearly says the anti-Messiah is dealt with directly by the Messiah when he returns. And so you can look at the life of the man, you can look at my age and say, how long, how long can he be around? How long can Monty be around? And you can get assessment of maybe how much time we have left in the end, end of the ages. So we're going to continue to watch that. Um, and I'm going to be paying attention to the other words that are said over him and what he says out of his mouth. We're going to watch real closely. This last week, uh, the IDF uh, defense minister, Gallant, made a very straightforward admission. Uh, a bunch of us have already known this, but he just came out publicly and said, Iran definitely has enough material for five nuclear weapons now. We've all been watching this enrichment thing taking place, and we know that Iran has been sneaking around to get this done. He's now saying they have it. By the way, Israeli intelligence on what's going on in Iran is premier. Uh, I think the United States knows it too, but they don't want to tell the people. But Gallant from Israel came out and flat said it publicly and openly. Now, <clears throat> one of the next questions that comes with this is, but are they trying to build a weapon yet? They may have all the parts, they may have some of the key parts, but are they actually trying to build a weapon yet? And furthermore, from a military standpoint is, how big a weapon is this going to be? Is this going to be a nuclear weapon that's in the kiloton range, or is it going to be in the megaton range? Most nuclear weapons that are used around the world are in the megaton range. I can tell you this, one megaton nuclear weapon on Israel takes the whole nation out. It would, it would destroy the nation. They're a what we call a one-bomb nation. They cannot tolerate this. There is no way. I mean, they are backed up against the wall about this. <coughs> Pardon me. So, <clears throat> what do we think is going to happen next? Well, it looks like we're going to have a regional war in Israel. The, all of their neighbors around are proxies of Iran. Everything from Hezbollah to Hamas to the Palestinians that are in the West Bank, to the PMU units that are in Syria and in Iraq. They all have drones, they all have rockets, and they all have missiles. And so the day is coming when this is all going to flood in on Israel. It'll be the prophecies of Ezekiel 38 and 39. The good news is that um, the Lord's going to win. Israel will, will win this war. And it will set the stage for the final days of the end of the age. But we're watching closely because this is, uh, and I'm not, I'm not kidding, guys. This is an extremely dangerous situation for Israel right now because of this. This last week, um, a prisoner, of, a Palestinian terrorist prisoner of the Islamic Jihad that had been in Gaza, had been in prison in Israel for some time, and he decided.